Should you be loading up on a bunch of soluble fiber or should you be eating more of that roughage and insoluble fiber? Which one is better? Because fibers are not the same. Okay, way too much misinformation out there surrounding that. Soluble fibers that draw water into your gut and do different things are entirely different than insoluble fibers that act as roughage and help push things through. Let's break it down. So soluble fiber is the kind of fiber that attracts water. It's the kind of fiber like chia and flax and things like that, that, that when you eat them, they create sort of a gel. And that gel helps push things through your gut, but it also has a different metabolic effect, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we'll kind of determine which one's better for fat burning, which one's better for uh, toxins, all that stuff. We'll kind of break it down on which ones are which. Okay, But then insoluble fiber are the things like, I don't know, the vegetable stalks, right? The cellulose, the stuff that doesn't break down. And what it does is it kind of creates a roughage and pushes things through. So this is going to be a quick guide to insoluble versus soluble. Please do hit that red subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon so you never Ever, ever miss a beat. And after this video, I want you to check out a company called Olipop. Okay, in the world of fiber, this company has created a soda, and it's not full of sugar or anything like that, that has a bunch of different prebiotic fibers in it. The fibers I'm gonna talk about in this video, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really cool. They've aimed everything towards good gut health. And a soda that can do that is pretty cool. Not to mention one that you can consume on a low carb diet, one that you can consume after your fast, all this, and still be able to get a good amount of fiber in. And something you could give to your kids and have a little bit of fun with them too. So anyway, there's a special link down below. I want you to check out Olipop. This is my personal favorite, the orange flavor. It's kind of tastes like a, kind of like an orange sickle. It's kind of that creamy orange. So anyway, check them out down below in the description after you watch this video. So fibers are resistant to digestion, but I say that with air quotes because digestion, just because something doesn't digest doesn't mean it doesn't get utilized. Okay, so because they are resistant to digestion, it just means that we don't have the enzymes to break them down. We don't have the enzymes in our gut to physically break down fibers. But what we do have is a microbiome that ultimately breaks them down. Okay, so our microbiome breaks them down because it ferments them. Now here's the big difference. Soluble fiber are heavily fermented. They feed our microbiome a lot. And we'll talk about that. And it ultimately results in something called a short chain fatty acid, which believe it or not, is a direct fuel for many cells. So what that means is when the world says, oh, fibers are like a net neutral food, they don't do anything other than provide roughage, that's kind of wrong because they break down and they create their own kind of energy, short chain fatty acids, which directly feed specific cells without going through the normal metabolic process. It's fascinating and it's kind of like free energy. Okay, now insoluble fiber, that doesn't break down either, and there's still a small fermentable effect, but insoluble fiber is great because it can pull toxins, it can pull mutagens, and it can help you excrete them. So they both have their purpose. I usually say that insoluble fibers are better for like cleaning up your, your act, cleaning up your diet, sort of going through, uh, dare I say, I don't even wanna say it because YouTube will ban it, spelled D-E-T-O-X. It can help with that kind of thing, whereas Soluble fiber is much more metabolically active and can probably change your body more. I lean towards more soluble fiber. But let's talk about this end result. You consume this soluble fiber, or even insoluble fiber in some cases, and it gets broken down by the bacteria in your gut. And then it gets broken down by more and broken down by more until ultimately you're left with these short chain fatty acids. Well, how does this work? What actually happens then? Well, these short chain fatty acids compete with glucose and other fuels. So this magical fuel that's been created by your crazy little bugs inside you has made it so that you have a fuel that can literally replace glucose with some specific cells. There are even some tissues like muscle that can use some short chain fatty acids. So the fiber that you consume in a soluble form, chia, flax, things like that, can by quite literally break down into a short chain fatty acid called acetate that can be a fuel for your muscles. What? In fact, seven to eight percent of our host requirements as a host for a microbiome end up being fed by short chain fatty acids. Seven to eight percent of our daily this energy is coming from short chain fatty acids within our cells. That is so ethically cool. I get excited about that, but I'm just weird. But let's let's jump over to like a low carb thing for a minute. And you may not be low carb, but a lot of people that watch this channel are very low carb because a lot of my channel talks about that. 
I typically recommend soluble fiber on a lower carb diet because it is less risky. Now I say less risky because in keto, low carb, we don't really know how fiber totally affects ketone production. Some people say if they have fiber, it kicks them out of keto. Some people say it has no effect and they'll eat 100 grams of fiber. But the thing is, is I think everybody responds differently. The fact is, insoluble fiber, you can get by with having less. You get by with having less because it draws water in and that swells in your colon and that helps do the job better. You can get by with less. You need less physical fiber to do the job, which means less potential risk. If it is a big question mark and we are wondering, is fiber up in the air, you might as well go the option that requires you to have significantly less because it's less potential risk. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. But I think the big thing I want to focus on here is soluble fiber is almost, I, want, I don't want to say this because it's literally incorrect, but it makes sense. It's metabolically active in a way. It is more of a fuel for our microbiome than insoluble fiber is. And the reason is because of these short chain fatty acids. Now let me explain what they do from a metabolic, even fat burning side to get you kind of excited about maybe having a little bit more fiber in your diet. Short chain fatty acids, the result of insoluble fiber breakdown, okay, that can regulate the balance of fatty acid oxidation and lipolysis, meaning it can help expedite some of the fat burning, but it can also slow down what's called de novo lipogenesis. It can inhibit the production of new fat, the creation of new fat. De novo means new lipogenesis, fat creation. It can inhibit new fat creation. That's pretty intriguing just by eating fiber and having it broken down by your gut microbes into short chain fatty acids. Also, I don't want you to miss Olipop's New Year's offer. So you can get 20% off their best selling 12 pack plus free shipping. So you're gonna get the flavors I talked about, the root beer, the strawberry, the vanilla, the ginger lemon, the cherry vanilla, the vintage cola, and the orange squeeze that I mentioned. So you can't find this deal in stores at all. So use that link down below and check out Olipop. And then if you are someone that is trying to be in a little bit of a caloric deficit, well, it turns out that these short chain fatty acids in the muscle and in the liver, they can phosphorylate and activate something kind of wild called AMPK. Now, before you turn off this video, I'll just summarize what that means. It means that your body senses that you're in a deficit, even if you're not necessarily in a total deficit. AMPK activation is your body's way of saying, uh-oh, I need to start utilizing my stored tissue. So short chain fatty acids flip that metabolic switch so your body just becomes a perpetuating self-feeding machine, which means that you could potentially get by with less calories, but also your body gets efficient at utilizing your stores. Now, it's very obvious when I do this video that I'm tilted a little bit more towards the soluble fiber side of things. It's just because the research from a metabolic standpoint is there, but that's not to say that insoluble fiber is bad. Huge, huge, huge benefits there, but insoluble fiber is much more along the lines of just digestion itself. Okay, okay. It, now what's wild is there's some studies that show that like soluble fiber can drive triglyceride content down, whereas insoluble fiber can actually drive it up. And that's just a temporary thing, but it has to do with the fact that soluble fiber can draw some of the triglycerides and help you excrete them out, where insoluble fiber might move some of the other stuff along so you're left with some of the lipids. Anyhow, that's a little bit of a digression. Point is, they're both important, but I do feel that a ratio is slightly skewed towards soluble fiber, which is what we're missing largely in most worldly people's diets, I think that's the way to go. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.